As we've learned from Troy Grady's incredible Cracking the Code series, the man who masters both directions of pick slants truly becomes the master of his own fate. So here's a lick for you guys to practice doing just that. <laughs> Hey kids and welcome to this week's installment of Weekend Wank Shop. Here's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. Anybody who's watched my videos knows that I'm a huge devotee of Troy Grady's incredible Cracking the Code series here on YouTube. Thanks to the series' super high production values plus innovations like the magnet camera mounting rig here, we're getting closer and closer views at how some of the alternate picking demigods like Paul Gilbert and Aldi Miola are able to do what they do. Basically what it comes down to is that the world's most powerful pickers have mastered what we call two-way pick slanting, a combination of downward pick slanting and upwards pick slanting styles. There's several different Week in Wang Shop episodes that have dealt with downward pick slanting or upwards pick slanting, but there's not a lot of stuff up there that deals with combining the two the way that a lot of the pros do. This week I'm going to give you a cool lick to use to practice getting in and out of both pick slants and show you why they're both needed to successfully be able to alternate pick anything. I'm also going to give you guys that are new to this a little bit of an overview about downward pick slanting and upward pick slanting, what they are and how they can help your life out. But before we get into it, let's hear it again at step dance speed. <laughs> Don't forget to get the full tab for this week's lick over on my Instagram page and upload a video of yourself playing it along with the hashtag Weekend Wank Shop. So first things first here before we get into all the picking shenanigans, let's learn the lick and the positions and stuff. This is in the E minor scale and it starts off here at the 7th fret on the A string. Now what we're going to do is on the A string here we're going to play 7, 9, 10, 7, 9, 10. Next move to the D string and play the same thing, 7, 9, 10, 7, 9, 10. After this, play the G on 7, 9, and 11 two times. 7, 9, 11, 7, 9, 11. So, so far you got... After this, we're going to go to the B string. Basically, just scooch up a fret and play the same shape you just played. That'll give you 8, 10, 12, 8, 10, 12. So now we're done with the ascending part. Next, what we're going to do is on the B string, you're going to play 13, 12, 10. So basically, after that last note I played in the ascending portion, it ended right here on the 12th fret. I'm just going to move that little finger up another fret and play 13, 12, 10. Now, unlike everything else we've done so far, we're just going to play that one time. So you don't, you don't double him up. Just single right there, 13, 12, 10. After this, we're going to go to the G string here and descend down 12, 11, and 9 two times. After this, we're going to go to the D string here and play 12, 10, 9, two times. And then the last thing that I did here is on the A string, I played 12, 10, and 9. Just one time there, too. So it's kind of like on either ends of the lick here and here. You only play those shapes one time. whole thing should yield this. And we scoot up. And then you can just loop it, start over where you were, you know? And the whole thing is going to be alternate pick, starting with a downstroke. But how, right? Here's the quickest crash course I can possibly give you on the power of pick slanting. One of the first things that any guitar player learns is to use downstrokes and upstrokes in their playing, right? 
And that's fine, and that'd be totally okay if you just always wanted to stay on one string. There's a problem arises whenever you play straight down and straight up. Do you see how the tip of the pick, in other words, the part that actually plays the string, is kind of always in between two strings? Like if I do a downstroke, it's now in between D and G. If I do an upstroke, it's now between D and A. This causes problems with this because we can pick on one string fine, but then whenever I want to move to say the G string, I've got to do this hop, right? Because if I'm kind of stuck here in between these two strings and I want to get to here, I got to leap over these. That's problematic and extremely unreliable at high speeds. So what I'm getting at here is with no pick slanting, the tip of the pick is always trapped in between the strings and it has to be freed by doing a hop, which sucks. In order to combat this, several of the first mega shredders like Ingve Malmsteen started developing, probably entirely by accident, what we call downward pick slanting. What that means is instead of taking this totally flat approach, where the pick is always kind of caught in between the strings, right? This literal straight up down thing. It's kind of like they just took that hand and just nudged it this way a little bit. Now, do you see how the upstroke is free of the strings and the downstroke is still trapped? That solved half of the problem right there. The big superpower of downward pick slanting, which is what you're seeing right now, is that it's easy to change strings after an upstroke because the tip of the pick is away from the strings. So it's really easy to play phrases that change strings after upstrokes. So like I said, downward pick slanting took this no angle picking and just turned it this way a little bit. Now, some players, fewer players actually, instead took the alternate route. They took this flat sort of picking like this and they tilted it this way. This is called upwards pick slanting. Vinnie Moore and several other players are upward pick slanters. All the opposites are true now. Do you see how the downstroke is outside of the strings now? It's easy to change strings after a downstroke whenever you play with upwards pick slanting. Meanwhile, the upstroke is the one that gets kind of caught in between the two strings, right? So upwards pick slanting, which is what you're seeing right now, is the position that we use anytime we need to change strings after a downstroke while alternate picking. See that? Because the tip of the pick is outside of the strings, it's very easy to find a new string. And it's kind of like the, the, the hop that I was talking about earlier, it's kind of built into the pick stroke. So it's completely flat picking, it's always hard to change strings after any stroke. Whenever you have downward pick slanting, it's always easy to change strings after an upstroke. And whenever you have upwards pick slanting, it's always easy to change strings after a downstroke. There's a handful of players out there that are picking demigods like Paul Gilbert, Andy Wood, and Martin Miller. And those are the guys who have mastered using both downward pick slanting and upward pick slanting to get them in and out of the strings no matter what the situation. There's a lot of misinformation about this stuff floating around the internet. Sometimes people think you use a certain type of pick slant when you're ascending and use a different one when you're descending. It has nothing to do with that. It doesn't have anything to do with which direction you're going through the strings. It has to do with what is the last note on the string being played. Is it a downstroke or is it an upstroke? If it's an upstroke, you should be in downward pick slanting mode. If the last note on the string is a downstroke, you should be in upwards pick slanting mode. That way you've always got a way out. One of the ways this ends up working out is that licks that contain an even number of notes on every string require only one pick slant. So for example, the first little set of ascending parts in today's lick goes down, up, down, up, down, up. That's a six note phrase, right? Even numbers. This means that if I replicate that phrase on other strings and I play other six note phrases, just like we did in today's lick, I don't need to change pick slants. Check it out. I'll start off in downward pick slanting here. That way my upstroke is popping out of the strings. Down, up, down, up, down, up. 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 Every one of those phrases began on a downstroke and ended with an upstroke. Thusly, only one pick slant is needed. However, after all those ascending sixes that we just played that always ended on an upstroke, down, up, 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 we ended up with this phrase, right? 13, 12, and 10 on the B string. Well, whenever I take that previous six note phrase that we just played on the B, the 8, 10, 12 part, and then I tack on, it becomes an odd number of nine notes on a string. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
More importantly, that means that it has me ending on a downstroke, right? Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. That last note on that string is a downstroke. Now, if the last note on the string is a downstroke, that means we need to be in upwards pick slanting mode. Upwards pick slanting means the downstrokes are out and the upstrokes are stuck in between these two strings, right? Watch as I change pick slants here on the B string. I'm gonna go from downward pick slanting to upwards pick slanting. And again, the reason I did that is because whenever I tacked on that three note phrase on the B string, it had me leaving that string on a downstroke. Again, it doesn't have to do with whether I'm ascending or descending, it has to do with what's the last note on the string. Is it a downstroke or an upstroke? That's what matters about all of this stuff. So again, watch the flip here. Downward pick slanting, upward pick slanting. All the next phrases are gonna go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. See how those all ended on downstrokes? That's why it's important to kind of flip to this upwards pick slanting on the B string. Flip. Just like that. So I'm gonna play this for you slowly here, starting off with downward pick slanting, and I'll give you a command when you reach the B string to flip into upwards pick slanting. Downward pick slanting, we start with a downstroke. Flip. 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 And because I know many of you will be asking, I'd say a lot of you guys, if you videotape your playing uh, in this sort of camera angle here, you'd probably see your picking making a somewhat curved motion like this. This is uh, a way that a lot of players kind of learn to get in and out of the strings, the same way pick slanting is. These kind of curved semicircle strokes like this. Now, it's entirely possible to play this way. There's a lot of players that do. Um, I find with most everybody, myself included, there's a speed limit. There's a speed limit to making these curves. Straight lines, you can make and replicate and do exactly the same time over and over and over and over again with more accuracy than curves. There's always kind of a speed limit to this. Or, you know, God forbid trying to hop in and out of the strings every time you're doing one of these. That's infuriatingly impossible to do. I really, really recommend that you guys find, uh, you know, friend, roommate, whoever it is that you can uh, snag, find your sister, tell us that hi. Get her to hold your phone and film your hand in this position right here using a slow motion feature that most cameras on phones have today. Film yourself in slow-mo, playing fast, and then watch it back and see what your motions look like playing this lick. Again, if you play it back and you see this kind of thing, this twisting motion, you're probably going to hit a speed limit. A lot of us even kind of move our thumbs and stuff like this in some sort of really primitive effort to get in and out of the strings, you know, like we're talking about. You can eliminate all that stuff if you can just watch your hands using a camera angle such as the one I'm using right here. So there you go, guys. A whole buttload of information about the picking strategies that can change your life or at least make you pick a hell of a lot faster. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you'd like to see a much more in-depth and better produced look at pick slanting and what it can do for you, be sure to go over to Troy Grady's YouTube channel and check out all of his Cracking the Code series as well as everything else he has on his channel. There is a mountain of information on his channel that can completely reinvent your playing. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also be sure to go and like my new Facebook fan page over on facebook.com slash Uncle Ben Eller. You guys can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Ben Eller Guitars. And if you'd like to book some one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons with me, be sure to drop me an email, benotherguitars at gmail.com. Thanks again so much for watching. Hope you guys have a good one. Cheers.